Yo, what is going on YouTube? My name is Blake and welcome back to another video. Um, as you saw, either you're going to see it before this or after this, I washed up my car, cleaned it up, first time actually cleaning it with the wrap. But today I'm driving from my house to Santa Clarita. It's about 3.40 right now um, and it's a Saturday so it shouldn't be horrible on traffic but it's still hour 45, two hour drive. So I'm going to catch back up with you guys once I get there and meet up with my buddy Nick. Just got to Santa Clarita, and I don't know if I mentioned, um, I'm here to do a photo shoot with my buddy. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but it is so hot out here. Look at that, I don't know if you can see it. 111 degrees, ugh. Kinda gross, but I'm gonna take you through the behind the scenes on how a photo shoot goes. All right guys, we out here. I don't know if you can even see the car, but. Out here with my buddy Nick. Getting those fire shots. <laughs> Alright, so this is my buddy Nick. What's up guys? Instagram's at the creeve. I'm gonna put it somewhere down here. Somewhere. But just quickly go over your, your camera setup that we're shooting with today. Okay, so I got a Nikon D5000. Uh, I'm using my 50 millimeter lens. It's a 1.8 um, stationary lens, so I just focus with no zoom on it. Um, it's a little sunny at the moment, so we're kind of trying to stick to the shade. We got the highlights in the car. Uh, Make it look fucking badass. Basically. Pretty good. <laughs> I wish these clouds were a little bit lower. Right? The sky is a little too high. You can cut some of this out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes it more entertaining if you don't cut it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, Which one are you using now? So this is the kit lens, 18 to 55 millimeter. So it's just the one that comes with the camera? Yeah, it's just to get those. Uh... Badass shots. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> Alright guys, this is actually pretty crazy. We ended up going by Paul Walker's crash site. They got the Subaru. There's this stuff. And there's a ton of people putting rest in keys, different things here. So I just thought this was pretty cool. I didn't realize it was right here. The rest in peace, Paul. The greatest. All right, guys. So I'm back at Nick's house right now. Um, he's going to show as much as he can without giving away his secrets to editing about how he basically edits photos. But you have to figure out the rest yourself. All right. So basically, you use Lightroom. Like, would you say that's the best for editing photos? Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, Both Adobe. Yeah. I don't really. I don't really use Photoshop too often. I, I typically use Photoshop just to put the watermark in, and then if I need to like remove objects like poles, and stop signs, people, Mr. Asa, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, that's that's fucking great. <laughs> so, we go. so, all right, we got some files. Let's do some crop shot. Right, 
So, here's the raw image. Make sure it's, it's in focus. Which is the first thing you want to make sure you check for <laughs> before you start editing. So, um... Now he's just messing with the crop settings to right, see how small he wants to do it. So it's four by three, right? Yes. That right there. So this will be perfectly set up for Instagram when you stretch it vertically. Mm -hmm. All right. So first thing, typically, what I like to do. It's so simple, but um, since you shoot raw, I want to remove the chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. The profile corrections pretty much just fix the picture and make it look exactly how it was in the picture. I just thought it was a little bit So now it's the way that it was. It brings out the sky, which isn't that bit. And then I like to dehaze the shot. The dehazing darkens the picture a little bit, but it also makes some of the details pop. So you'll see the difference in the sky right now. That's what we're doing. I can see it, but you can't really tell. Can't really tell on the camera, but the sky is basically getting more clear, essentially, from dehazing. Forty is a little much. Then after the shot is dehazed, it's a little bit cool. So by cool, you mean it's like bluish, right? Looks more red. Yeah, so it's not like a fiery sun. <laughs> then I'm gonna mess with the exposure just a little bit. There. Um, one of the things that I like to do on almost pretty much all of my shots, I put a graduated filter on the bottom, bring it up from the bottom to the car. And what this is basically allows you to raise or lower the exposure in a certain area, or change whatever else you want to do. You can like change the tin. You know, I don't know why you would do that, but maybe you know. <laughs> it looks weird, but. Um, so yeah, you could change the tint around, but typically I go to negative 1.61, that's the number I have memorized. And I bring it up right up to the car. And basically what it does is it darkens the foreground, brings your eyes more to the car. Yeah, not the background. Yeah, well the background looks like the foreground. Yeah. So, um, this is my necessity for all of the This is the adjustment brush. So the adjustment brush basically does the same thing as the graduated filter, except you control where it goes. So, basically, we're going to highlight the entire car. I'm going to do this quickly so you can see what I'm talking about. Those of you who edit your own photos already know this, so this is not going to you. Okay, so now that the car is highlighted, this is obviously very sloppy because it's quick. But when you raise the exposure, now just the car is being exposed. Nothing else in the photo, just the car. Yes, yeah, so do it all the way. So, <laughs> your car is white. <laughs> See now this actually shows you the, the spots where you missed. Where I missed. Yeah. But typically, what I'll do is I will like let's say like kind of want to make the exposure to about there. Yeah, it looks a lot brighter on here than it does in person. Yeah. Just so you guys know, it's not it's not actually that bright. So, so I'll, I'll put the actual picture in at the end of this. Typically what I'll do is I will mess with the highlights on the adjustment brush and then I'll go around the car real quick without the highlight, um, without this part on. Mm. And I'll just go around and I'll just erase the outside parts of the car so it looks more even. And then I'll take the adding part and I'll just pretty much go to the edge of where the car is at so you hit all the spots that you missed initially. It's 
a very slow process editing photos. Any of you guys who edit your own photos know, you know, it's pretty much back and forth, back and forth to get the perfect spots touched up in the shot that you want. And if you mess up a little bit, just go back and touch it up even more until it's perfect. It's a long process, but the end result is totally worth it. Um, okay, the last thing I'm going to share, um, it's something that I like to do a little bit more recently in my shots. Um, I like to darken the windshield a little bit because I don't have any filters on my lens. So pretty much uh, by darkening the windshield, it just, to me it makes the car pop a little bit. So, Yeah, definitely. But anyways, um, the end result of this photo. I'm gonna post it like right after this and I'm gonna put his Instagram right here also. I did that earlier, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm also gonna put my Instagram down there if you wanna check us out. But that's gonna be it for the, uh, the editing and the photo shoot. I'm actually just going to go ahead and close it out right now. Just wanted to say thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.